Yes. So we've been talking about different types of dreams and went over um, that there's the nightmares, which I talked about in class two, that there's chemical body or flushing dreams that are just, just dreams that we have as human beings. Or if we take uh, like NyQuil, you can have a NyQuil dream. A body dream can just be if you're dreaming that you need to go to the bathroom, you wake up, you have to go to the bathroom. It's just a body dream. Your body's telling you something you need to do. A flushing, you can pick it up just from life, um, something that's not good, and in your dream it'll just be flushed out. Um, insight and direction dreams are those that just as we learn to pay attention to our dreams, God can direct us and give us insight into whether we should stay at a job, whether we should move, um, what to speak on at conferences. That's what I've had the the joy of my dreams that have given me that insight. So pay attention to your dreams. I'm not sure what was caught and what wasn't. Not much. Not much. Not much. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so let's see. Any questions about what I talked about? Any comments? Silence. <laughs> <laughs> the sound of silence. Um, so that one, let's see, oh, so the self-awareness dreams um, also are like God letting you know where you are in your Christian walk. So sometimes, um, in fact, I had a really cool dream about being with, being with God, and it was a really happy, joyful dream. Well, when I woke up, I realized that I had actually been feeling like I wasn't do, you know, I was off track in my, in my daily life. I was feeling bogged down and off track, and God gave me a dream that was like, no, you're on track, just keep moving forward. And, and it was a, you know, a dream to most of our dreams where God is saying, come back, you know, and get close and, and be in um, conversation with him. So I, I don't know what else I was going to talk about with the... Um, I remember a dream that, that Sharon had. You were talking about uh, wordplay. Mm. And the one that she had about how she was walking along the, the highway, feeling lost out there in the dark. And the interpretation of the dream was that she is on the highway. That is such a good dream. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, and um, Teresa shared a dream with me. Would you share the one about the, um, the dark? The whole thing or just the snow? Just part? that. Just the snow. Okay. Yeah, that's actually um, in, in my dream, there was it was dark out, and Roger had gotten a job somewhere that was dark and snowy. And I thought I saw snow on the ground, but it was too dark to tell. And I reached out to touch it, and it was snow. So the dream was dark, right? Yes. So in a dark dream, you can think that that's a dark dream or a negative dream. But this goes to show you that um, in the Bible, it says in several places, you know, treasures are hidden in dark places. So a dark dream doesn't always have to be negative. And you said in the dream that it actually felt like it was a good dream, right? Mm -hmm. So in, in, so you, what you're feeling in the dream can be um, clues to what the dream's about as well. So in the dream, it's dark. She feels like it's snowing, but she's not sure. She reaches out and touches, and, and it is snow. Well, it's dark, and one of the main scriptures of our dream class is Proverbs 25, 2, that it's the glory of God to conceal a matter keep it hidden or dark, mm -hmm. but it's the glory of kings to search it out. And so as she reached out, she could tell, yes, it was snow. Well, snow can represent revelation. Mm -hmm. So revelation can also be those things that God has for you, but you have to search them out. Sometimes it's putting um, one and one together to get the full understanding. But um, So it's an awesome dream, and it also goes to show not all dark dreams are dark mm -hmm. or negative. Um, and that helps give you, for like Teresa, it's, it's actually a, a point where she can compare other dreams to it, other dark dreams to it, and know whether they're, you know, dark negative or positive, and to search it out. But it's a very good dream. So that's, I love the one about Sharon being on the highway, that when you feel like it doesn't always, you know, our emotions are valid and we pay attention to them because they can be keys of what's going on in our life. But they're not always an indicator of where we are with God. Uh -huh. And I, I love that play on words, the highway. And um, I was going to say, too, with the Nicolas Cage and the Tom Selleck, this really is a season to pay attention to names 
um, whether in your dreams, people in your dreams, or in the news. I've seen a ton of people in the news with names that indicate um, <laughs> characteristics. And so when something's highlighted to you like that, then pray. Ask God how to pray or what's being prompted. And of course, you don't come into agreement with anything that's negative, but you pray God's kingdom on earth as it is in heaven. So, any other dreams? We kind of went over the uh, types of dreams. Let me see. I'll see if there's any others that I... The types of dreams, some of them can just be, I don't know, if there's... Uh, some of it can get confusing, so I try to really simplify it. Um, it kind of reminds me, Justin. Yeah. When you, um, about, because we've talked about how 95% of the dreams are about the dreamer. But mm -hmm. what about, you know, we kind of glanced over it, but I'm not sure that we caught it, about the intercession. Okay. When you say the 5%, what is it? Okay, so Karen brought up the fact that 95% of dreams are about the dreamer, which means a high percentage of dreams are about the dreamer. And anytime you're involved in a dream, the dream is about you. So even if you are with a group of people and there's someone doing some other thing, it can be rep the dream is representing you. And so not to, not to make it about something else. But in the 5% that, um, where you're not involved in the dream, where you're just an observer, those are often intercession dreams. So what you're seeing going on are keys on how mm -hmm. to pray, what God's showing you. So if you're seeing negative things going on, um, like Helen was, was basically, in last week's cattle towing dream, she was in a car riding, but she was basically observing what was going on. And so um, that was a dream showing her that people were being led to the slaughter, so to speak. And it could be in their thinking and their belief system, where they're just accepting everything that's um, given to them, or what's happening to them, they're just accepting it. So in that dream, you don't pray, Lord, you know, help people be more accepted and led to the slaughter. <laughs> that's not the, that's not the idea of the dream. No. But you you pray the opposite of that, Lord, um, cause people to rise up to follow you and to be able to take a stand and um, and to come into the belief system that's based on Jesus, that's based on the truth and to live the life accordingly, and not just to follow anything that they're being pulled into. So, and so those are intercession dreams where you, you're observing, you're seeing what's going on, and um, it's actually quite a privilege. So a lot of those things that you're shown are um, secrets between you and God, so you hold it in confidence, and often it's, it's a confidence that God is um, sharing with you so you just be careful whether to share it or not. You know, don't do it unless you have permission. Um, it, it is a really, to partner with God and what's on his heart is a huge deal. So, and to pray his, as you, as you like with, um, with the, where you're just observing, then you ask God the verses. What verses seem to go? Are there any of the elements of the dream in the Bible? All right. Warning dreams. We talked about the dream um, my sister had of, the death penalty being squeezed around the middle, that was a warning dream. She woke up, she took care of business, and the doctor basically, she did go in for surgery. And um, so her life was saved because she paid attention to a dream. Um, I'm smiling because, <laughs> not because of the death penalty, but one time I told her, um, I asked her, she was in a conference with me, and I asked her to share um, a dream, and I was thinking about a different one, and she shared the death penalty one. But I was thinking my sister actually had a dream, that, and I said, share the dream that saved your life. Mm -hmm. And so she shared the death penalty because it literally saved her life. But I was referring to um, years ago she had a dream that she bought a, um, a red Mazda Miata convertible from a co-worker for $5,000. And, um, and so the next day she was joking around with her co-worker and said, hey, I dreamed I bought your, your um, Miata. And the coworker just had this surprised look on her face and said, I was thinking about selling it. And so my sister bought it. But the reason the dream saved her life is because it was on my bucket list to drive a, a red Mazda Miata convertible down Highway 1. And so if she would have bought the car without a dream, I, I would have been highly 
I would have killed her. Okay. Yes. <laughs> it's like that was my dream, not yours. What are you doing? So, um, so anyway, that's the dream that that literally saved her life as well. <laughs> I don't know if you're watching, Laura, but I confess right here and now. So, okay. Any other dreams about? Um, there's been dreams about inventions. Those are real types of dreams where um, I met a lady in um, Bakersfield actually that had a dream about how to set up a network, how to pay for those surgeries that are cosmetic or whatever. Um, and it came, her invention came through a dream. She does not have a degree in any form, and she's a millionaire now because she followed what the dream told her to do. Huh. That's a good dream. I met someone who had a dream on how to um, fuel cars without fossil fuels, and they took it before some um, engineers that said that would actually work. Uh, so there's, and then I think Bill Johnson talks about someone who invented a bow, a certain type, like a bow and arrow type, um, and it, it was a newfangled thing, and, and it worked really good. High-end bow. I, um, I heard another story about someone that invented the... Um, the finishing, you know, where you don't, where it doesn't take harsh chemicals to finish a piece of furniture, that there's actually something out there to remove the stuff and to finish it. So there's all kinds of ad adventures out there, adventures mm -hmm. in inventing out there. And if you have things on your mind that you're thinking about and want to do, um, there's a, the sewing machine came from an invention. Uh, a lot of songs yesterday, the Beatles song came from a dream um, Billy Joel's had dreams with it. Google, actually, the idea for Google, the search engine, came from a dream. Mm -hmm. So these are current ones as well as uh, dreams that have happened, or invention dreams that have happened for a while. Hmm. Hmm? Electricity. Electricity. That came from a dream? For Bernie. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So God is pouring out ideas in dreams. Let's grab some. Lord, we'd like some inventions. In Jesus' name. I mentioned the calling dream. Basically, God's showing you um, what or affirming what he's called you to do. And even with your dream about Tom Selleck going higher, that God is saying, get on the plane. It's time to go. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and the nanny in the dream just represents that God's providing someone to help take care of the gifts that you carry. So it's a powerful dream. Courage dreams. The my dreams about being naked gave me courage to speak on those <laughs> and to be vulnerable in, in front of strangers that I didn't know. Um, okay, so we talked about dark dreams, both good and bad. So those are those are the dreams and the um, the type of categories I was I was going to share tonight. One thing is just to pay attention to. Um, Oh, there's healing dreams as well. I shared though, I think I've shared it before, but maybe not here. Go ahead. I was going to say, I'm not sure that that was taught on the um, book that you Okay. Karen just brought up that um, might not have got caught on the Facebook Live, the, that whenever you have a negative dream, that you flip it, you turn it. It's, it's God. God said to pray His will on earth as it is in heaven. So if you have a negative dream, then you look at it and you flip it. If you're being attacked or hindered where you can't speak, then you wake up and you say, I will declare the full you know, praises of God. I will declare everything he wants me to. Or if, if you're at work, um, if the dream you're at work and your voice is being suppressed, then it's basically saying in your work or ministry to speak out. Um, and you just... And, and you, you can say, I'll be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might, but you declare a positive. You flip it around and declare a positive. That's very good. Thanks, Karen. Um, in healing dreams, I, I think I shared this dream. I didn't know I'd share it with you guys. I'll share it again. Of uh, When I had the opportunity to drive um, Don Potter around, who's an incredible musician, and he was, he was playing at a conference. And... Um, it was like two or three day conference and I drove him around and stuff, but I was busy with other things. I had other stuff going on and coming at me. And at the end of it, I felt like I totally missed my opportunity to just talk with him, his wife, and learn from them. And so I was kind of beating myself up and I just had this, uh, just felt horrible about it. 
And it's one of those things, you know when you feel that condemnation and that coming against you, that there's nothing you can do to make it right. You know, he's gone, he flew home, I can't, hey, come back, let's do that again, let's try again, do over. I couldn't do that, but um, that night I had a dream where in the dream, all it consisted of was I was seated in a chair and his wife and him were seated across from me, he had his feet up, and we were talking the entire night. Just he was just I was asking him questions, he was sharing. I don't remember any details of the dream except for when I woke up I had peace in my heart that whatever I needed from Don Potter, God gave me through that dream and totally healed my heart. So um, God can heal heal you whenever you feel like you need a do over or you feel like you missed an opportunity. Physical healings have come in dreams. I had a friend that said she felt like she had heart surgery in a dream. So um, and deliverance can come in a dream if you're uh, um, wrestling with just things you're struggling with. That can come in a dream. So um, God can take care of a lot of business in dreams. And I love it because we spend a third of our lives sleeping, and God loves us so much. He's like, you know what, let's, mm -hmm. let's keep talking. Go ahead and sleep. But um, I like that psalm that says, I slept, but my heart was awake, that God is always communing with us. So. Very good. All right, spiritual warfare. Has any of you had guns or being chased or chased after someone else? Mm -hmm. Sometimes you're actually taking care of business in a dream when there's fighting going on. Um, and sometimes those spiritual warfare dreams, if you, if you have a lot of them, then pray and ask God to show you where he is in them and what's going on and how to um, stand with him and to move through that. And if you have any negative feelings about it, then talk to me about it too, so we can pray through it if you have any questions or struggles with it. All right, a false dream is is a dream that's not from God. And a scripture for that would be Ezekiel 14.4. And it basically talks about that when you have a desire in your heart that is so strong, but it's not matched up with what God has for you, that he will give you that desire. And, um, but it's not, it's, it's basically to show you because um, when you have a really strong desire that's not in accordance with God, it's, it's like having an idol in your heart. And so um, God will allow that to, to happen. So you don't want those kind of dreams. You don't want a false dream. <laughs> you want the true ones from God. So it's to, send or, to surrender any, um, any dreams that aren't, or any desires. Just surrender your desires to God and he'll help. He'll, you know, it's a good thing just to say, you know, your will be done, God, in this situation. So, is there any questions online? Okay. All righty. Let's see. What else? Is there any other dreams? Let's see if I... Those are from last week. Oh, one thing, when you have, um, this isn't about types of dreams, but pay attention, like if you have several dreams in one night, even though they seem really disconnected, they're, they're connected, often connected, as well as if you have several dreams within one week. Um, so it's good to keep that dream journal because then you can go back and, and you can see the connection as you get the overview of it. So um, pay attention to dreams that you've had within recently. Pay attention to reoccurring dreams, and the thing with reoccurring dreams is they'll stop reoccurring once you've gotten the message God wants you to have from it. So I had a reoccurring dream for years. That's how they often are. Um, and a lot is before I understand what dream interpretation, you know, what a dream means. But um, I had a dream that I was in this huge house, but when I went to the different floors, there was wallpaper peeling off, it needed a lot of work, it was old, it needed new flooring. Um, and then one time I had a dream within a dream, and in the dream I met my sister and I said, oh, do you want to see the house that I always have when I dream? So I went to show her my, my house, and when I walked in, it was completely redone. There was mm -hmm. like all this royal bedding, there was chandeliers, it was just beautiful and open and um, so... And, of course, your house is about your life. So <laughs> God has done a lot of work in my life, but he was showing me the progression. And um, so that was awesome just to say, hey, there's been some good work done in my life that God's establishing.
So pay attention to the dreams that repeat. Mm -hmm. any, any questions? Any thoughts? Danny posted a little bit ago, and I didn't see it, but she said recently I drove head on into a triceratops. <laughs> when you were talking about the dream earlier. Okay. So sorry I didn't get that before. You were talking about warfare. What was it? When you were talking about warfare. Talking about warfare. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what would a triceratops mean in a dream? Dinosaur, right? Yeah, yeah, it's a dinosaur, it's extinct. So maybe it's something really big in her perception, but maybe not so big exactly in the guy's right. perception because it's extinct, it's done, it's, you know, it's already been defeated. Yeah, it, <laughs> it is no more, so it really has no power. No, but it looks really big and scary. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So what's it mean that she ran directly into it? Oh. I was going to say because it's triceratops and they have like the three horns. And Teresa and I thought the same thing. We both looked at each other. Um, the Trinity is really God's Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Oh, and, yeah. yeah. Triceratops, huh? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Except this is an aggressive move toward it. I get the feeling it was an aggressive move toward it. It, ha it could be those couple of possibilities that um, to drive straight into it, you're, you're facing something head on, right? Exactly. You're facing something head on. So, um, God's been around since the dinosaurs. <laughs> 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 Sarah, Sarah. Yeah, Fox. you know, that's what I thought, but I didn't even go there. But thank you. <laughs> Try the three. Sarah's is zero. So you're doing that, you're doing that, like... Triceratops, yeah. That's playing on words, if it was... Yeah. So you're t saying zero. Zero tops the trinity, is that what you're saying? There's nothing that tops the trinity? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that's just a play on the word of triceratops. Right. Um, and back to what Karen said about it's a dinosaur, it's extinct, that there's something huge. But what's awesome is, is um, Danny, if you're... If there's something that's in in the past that's extinct, but there's something that's bothered you, you're facing it head on. Okay. So that's a really good dream that way. Yeah. It's a good dream if the Triceratops is God, he's big, it's overwhelming, and you're just going, you're all in with him. So in that aspect, it's good. And the dreamer, of course, has the final is the final authority on what the interpretation means. So um, when someone gives you a correct interpretation, it'll meet with your spirit. It'll go, ah have an aha moment going, that's what that is. So, um, what? Jenny, Jenny says, heck yeah, aha. <laughs> <laughs> Very cool. Thanks for the feedback. Um, just so you all know, I love feedback. And just so you all know, I've told you before that you have permission to nag me. If you ask me a question and I don't respond, um, email me and I don't respond, please email me again. I just gave a... Um, a testimony today of a person that texted me and said, hey, back in August you said you were going <laughs> to set a time for me to talk to you about dreams. And I totally forgot about it, so I had to apologize and say thank you so much for, for you know, reminding. asking again and reminding me. So don't, um, I just encourage you that if you don't hear from me, that means I could have just mm -hmm. absolutely forgotten. Three horn face? Okay. Three horned face is the literal um, definition. definition of a of a triceratops, Danny, so that can add more to it that if it's something that's um, three horned, horn can mean something that has a, a horn in the Bible means strength. Can it's represent strength. strength. Can represent strength. Yes. Because the psalmist is always talking about he, he elevated my horn or raised my horn or, you know. I know. Yeah. What does that mean? In Revelation, there's the horn beast. Mm -hmm. So it can be both, you know, the what we talked about in this class is there's genuine and there's counterfeit. So 
depending on the context of the dream, you'll understand whether it's genuine or counterfeit. And God can be a little bit stretching on that because it talks about the fear of the Lord. So, <laughs> thank you, Mara. Did you say that the dealer drove into? Head on, yeah. Head on. She drove head on into, yeah. Because I'm just, I, I just have a picture of um, Psalm 91, the very first line that says, um, you know, when you, you abide in the Lord, that you're under, you have safety in the shadow of his wings, and, I, and then he's our high tower, and we run into him for um, safety. safety. And, and I'm just thinking, that's so, that's such a big, animal and that person is running right into it for it could be a huge shelter oh okay and a place of safety as well as a threat to you or your life yes see I didn't feel like uh, it was a threat at all mm -hmm. But I think that's because I watched Land Before Time with my kids. <laughs> and so when they say Triceratops, I think Sarah. And I think, yeah. oh, she's cute. She, you know, I'm not, I don't think, that, like, and I, so for me, it's, it was all good. It felt like it was all good. Was not my dream. And I don't so. think, I don't consider Triceratops a dangerous dinosaur well, because they're herbivores. Right, yeah, the T Rex. Right. <laughs> okay. If it was a T Rex, then. Triceratops. <laughs> <laughs> little Sarah, yeah, she's my favorite. Yeah, I'm just proud of all of you that know your dinosaurs. Guys. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so it is 7 o'clock. I've been given the signal that it's 7 o'clock. So we will um, take a break for 10 or 15 minutes and return uh, for the second half, which will be dream interpretation. Thanks, guys.